never happen again. Amen. Thank God. God's going to help us this morning, and I'm trusting that God is going to speak to you. Turn into your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 9. A few weeks ago, I was in the conference in South Africa. South Africa is a wonderful nation. Spent seven and a half years there, and it is such a mixture, wonderful mixture of races and, and cultures. Uh, during the during the conference, uh, I had pastors asking me questions concerning various problems that, uh, that they were experiencing in, in ministry. And uh, according to what was being asked, my answer had to do with the supernatural uh, overcoming demonic opposition. And what was very striking to me, there was a mixture of races and cultures in the office asking this question, very noticeable the difference in response between white Westerners versus Africans in what their response and receiving what I had to say. And so very noticeable from pastoring there, Africans have a worldview. They look at life and their worldview includes the supernatural. Westerners often do not have that worldview. So this is important because the text, Jesus is sending his men into the ministry and he includes as part of the ministry sending charge, he said, you must drive out demons. In other words, there has to be something supernatural if you're going to minister. I want to preach about a supernatural worldview. Luke 9, we're going to read the first two verses. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick, a supernatural worldview. Let's talk about your worldview. Every person here, you have a worldview. By definition, that is a conceptual framework that helps you to understand life. Worldview simply means how do you look at life? And when you look at life, how do you interpret or understand what is going on? So worldview is how you interpret life. In the events of life, every person internally has questions going on in their head. Why? Why is this happening to me? Where is this coming from? Some people have a worldview that it is luck. Luck determines everything, just random chance. Others have a worldview that it is God. If anything bad happens, it's God punishing you. And then, of course, the obvious question is, what did I do wrong? That's worldview. You interpret life. It's how you view your life and your circumstances. What is happening in my life? How should I feel about that? How should I react to what is happening to me? Some people, they, in their worldview and upbringing, they believe in karma. Bad things are happening. It's fate. This is payback from past sins or wrongdoing. Calvinists in, uh, uh, in Western society, Calvinism has a worldview that God has predestined it. There's nothing you can do. God chose it beforehand. You're stuck. Some of you, if you were raised uh, Catholics, uh, if you are raised as a Catholic, it is very natural when you deal with Catholics, bad things happening. We have Catholic guilt. I deserve this, All right? That is what they're looking at. They are interpreting, they're reacting and viewing life. Therefore, the key question of worldview is, what actions should I take in light of what is happening to me? Can anything be done to change the circumstances of my life, or is it pointless? And very importantly, in your worldview, is God the answer to the practical problems of life, or should you look outside of God for supernatural help? So worldview, everyone has a worldview. You gain it by how you were raised, your culture, your education, your religion. So the two main worldviews in life that we're going to look at. Number one, some people have what we call a Western or a secular worldview. 
in the events of life, bad things happen, your, your lot in life, that is interpreted simply by this, life consists only of natural and physical. We rely on our senses. We believe in science. Life is only about what I can see, examine, measure, or test. And so if something is happening in life, it has to be explained only or solely with natural explanations. Why do things happen? Cause and effect, genes and germs, or just random chance, there is no reason for it. And so the spiritual or the supernatural dimension for those with a secular Western mindset or worldview, the, the supernatural has no part or no effect in our lives. As a matter of fact, what's very common when I deal with Westerners, particularly white Westerners, is that if you talk about things that are supernatural or unexplained, Westerners get very nervous about that. <laughs> One of the things is I, I travel around and preach. Sometimes God will inspire me in an altar call. I'll, I'll pray. How many of you here in your house, you wake up and you can feel something in your room? Sometimes you can feel something sitting on you. How many of you here, you can see things moving in your house? Westerners would rather admit they have hemorrhoids than admit there's anything supernatural in the house. It's like that gets good. Those with a super, like, of course, yes. The second worldview is third world or supernatural worldview. Someone who has this worldview, they see the natural of, of life, what you can feel and see, but they believe that that is closely intertwined with the supernatural. Come on, wake them up. They say that the spiritual or the supernatural world affects the physical or the natural world. Depends on where you're from. Some people, they believe in gods. India, Asia, they have gods. You can use these gods to get money, to get good luck, to get love, different things. Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada has a Thai Brahma shrine. It has a money god. The reason why that's there is there are people who believe Gods can help you get money. That is a way of looking at life. I, get, I got a tremendous education when I went to South Africa. I was witnessing in an area of Soweto and uh, witnessed to an African, told him about Jesus, and he just sneered at me and said, I'm not interested in your power. I have my own power. And, I'm, you know, I said, what is it? And he said, it's the power of the ancestors. So I didn't, have a, I didn't go to school with a lot of ancestor worshipers. So I said, <laughs> how does that work? Explain that to me. And he told me a story. He said, I was in trouble with the law. And he said, uh, basically, a witch on a, on, a, uh, on a taxi, a witch looked at him and said, you're in trouble with the law, aren't you? And he said, yes, this she, demonic word of knowledge. She said, the reason why you have offended your grandparents that's why you're in trouble with the law. What is the answer? Take a chicken, go to your grandparents' grave, slaughter the chicken, and apologize to your grandparents. And he said, I did it, and the charges were dropped. So I said, so you believe dead people are actively involved in your life? And he said, absolutely. So that's, that's a worldview. Now, of course, because I'm a thinker, I asked him, said, so they can help you with your life. Uh, were your grandparents poor? He said, yes. Did they have a lot of problems? Yes. Did they have addiction problems? Yes. So I said, I don't get it. They couldn't help themselves when they're alive, but now they're dead, they can help you? Right? So, but anyway, the Bible is clear there is an unseen world that has a direct effect on our lives. It's supernatural. Super means beyond or above what is natural. 
it goes beyond what you can see, measure, test, or explain. Verse 1, he gives them a command. If you're going to pioneer, if you're going to do a work for God, he says, drive out all demons. Matthew 10, 1, evil spirits. Elsewhere in the scripture, it talks about devils. This is talking about evil spiritual or supernatural being, beings. They're not just floating around like Casper the ghost. They're not just haunting people, but actively involved in people's lives, causing torment, problems, and resistance to the work of God. See, the Bible has a spiritual or a supernatural worldview. The Bible is clear. The spiritual world directly affects the physical world. We read about a man named Job. We read about his problems. His money is, uh, is being robbed from him. Enemies, he even names them the Sabaeans and different ones that are stealing his money. There is destruction on his property and his family. The Bible says it's wind and lightning cause that. He's experiencing physical sickness. But the Bible says if you start the book of Job, you understand Above all of that or beyond what you can see with enemies, wind, lightning, and sickness, the Bible says the devil was involved. There was a supernatural dimension that had access to his life and it was causing problems. That is unseen. Job did not know that it was the devil causing this. See, if you don't have a supernatural worldview. If you don't understand what I just said, the spiritual affects the physical, you are going to struggle in life unnecessarily. There are people, they live, their sins are forgiven, they're on their way to heaven, but then they talk about practicals in life. Every time I get ahead, something breaks, someone gets sick, we lose a job, so therefore I can never get ahead and in their mind that is only natural mean boss bad economy but that's spiritual coincidence people tell me every time we have revival the kids get sick like every time are you like really unlucky <laughs> certain times crucial moments some of you have physical conditions, and the doctors have told you, we have no idea why this is happening. There's, there's, no, there's no rational reason, but it is. You're sick, there's pain, there are problems. So, some things in life cannot be explained naturally. You've heard through the years, I've told you, and when I went to South Africa, I came in contact with a witch doctor. Witch doctor, I went to his house, and uh, he, the, the night that he got saved, he brought out all of his witchcraft paraphernalia. And I made him make a choice. You're going to have this. You're tormented by fear. You're going to burn in hell. Or you're going to have Jesus set you free. What do you want? He said, I want Jesus. Prayed for him. Cast demons out of him. I took all of his witchcraft paraphernalia home with me. And in my backyard, I soaked it in gasoline and I burn it up. Except... There's one thing that they have. It's a wooden handle with a horse tail attached to it. Wood and hair I soaked in gasoline and it would not burn. I don't know a lot of things, but that ain't natural. <laughs> we had in Prescott years ago, we had a house, as you know, when you get a cheap house, it kind of gets passed from person to person. Every single couple that moved into that house, they got sick. And I'm talking cancer sick, very sick. They would describe, they'd come, they'd be embarrassed. They'd say, Pastor Mitchell, when we come in the middle of the night, the rocking chair is rocking by itself. On a cold morning, we go to put on our slippers and they're warm like somebody had been wearing them. That ain't normal. That's not supposed to happen, right? Supernatural. So 
In our text, the Bible connects ministry for God to a spiritual or a supernatural dimension. There are five sending texts in the Gospels. Luke 9, 1, I give you authority to drive out all demons. Matthew 10, 1, authority to drive out evil spirits. Luke 17, demons are subject to us. Matthew 28, 18, all authority is given to me. Mark 16, 17, power to drive out all demons. So it is clear God is making a point. You cannot completely minister for God if you don't have a spiritual worldview. You're going to struggle. If you're approaching ministry simply through natural methods, you are going to struggle all over the world. I've been asked questions that go like this. Can this be witchcraft? And then they explain. Every time we get a convert... Someone religious rips them off or that we lose them through morals or some bizarre thing uh, uh, takes them away. They talk about struggles they're experiencing. When I drive up to the church, it's like I can feel something. Can that be witchcraft? And the answer is, of course it can. Because we live in a supernatural world and you have to have a worldview that is supernatural. Why is this happening? How should I react? What should I do? A natural worldview is insufficient. It must be supernatural. Let's talk secondly about demons in ministry. Because in our text, he says, drive out all demons. Let's talk about a few different types of demons. And no, I'm not talking about the person you're married to. (laughs) So the first of these are entrenched demonic powers. Repeated sinful actions gives the devil the right to be there. Access. This is what sin does, is it opens doors and gives him the right to rule in a family, in a life, in an area. Mark 3, 27, no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then he'll plunder his house. So... This is talking about, Jesus is is talking about ministry, and he says, he gives the picture of a strong man armed. It's his house. He has the right to be there. He is going to use force or power to hold on to it so you can't get in. But he applies that to ministry. So, curses, that's what the Bible talks about. A curse simply means the door is open. You've opened the door in some way that gives the devil access. I've been asked this all over the world, is it possible to be cursed? And then they tell me about every time I get ahead, the finan- every t- one sickness after another, it goes from mom to dad to kid to brother to cat and moves around, never <laughs> changes over and over again. Yes, absolutely. People can be cursed. That is true. You see that. Families can be cursed. Some of you are raised with family curses of addiction and poverty. Some of you have families. All the men in your family die of a certain way and a certain age. There's curses in people's lives, areas of bondage. And then, of course, in churches and even cities, there can be entrenched entrenched demonic powers. This is something you can feel it. You can feel that on people sometimes. You can feel that in uh, uh, areas or cities, buildings. This is the way to entrench demonic power. Second type of demon is outside demonic assault. This is not talking about something that is entrenched or something that the devil has a right to be there. This is simply the devil who is temporarily warring against you. There is no reason. This is often the puzzle for people. I went to bed with the victory and when I woke up this morning it's like my head is in a vice. I I don't remember waking up sleepwalking and sinning so what happened? The devil's in the area. That's all. The devil is limited. He can't be everywhere in the world at the same time. That is why there are seasons where you feel something supernatural in in your life. 
Sometimes this is witchcraft. People are deliberately targeting you. When Lisa and I moved to South Africa, I've, I've always, I can sleep. I have no problem sleeping. Moved to South Africa and began to wake up 3 a.m., not 301, not 259, 3 a.m., night after night after night. It's like, what the heck is this? Why? I slept great in America. I come here, and now I'm waking up every night. Then when the witch doctor confessed to me that each night the demons would wake him up and they would gather to try to curse us. When was that? 3 a.m. It's like, oh, can I poke you in the eye now? All right, yeah. <laughs> don't ever take my sleep and don't ever take my coffee. That's not right, okay? <laughs> Outside demonic assault. Thirdly is internal opposition. These are people who are causing supernatural opposition and you're in contact with them. Now listen to me. Galatians 5 talks about the works of the flesh, and one of those is witchcraft. We think of witchcraft, we're thinking of black magic, sacrificing cats. When I came back from South Africa, I, I must confess, one of the things I was looking forward to getting back to, uh, to America, after battling on the front lines of witchcraft, I thought, man, I want to be glad to get back to America where there's no more witchcraft. Had uh, people had to deal with them, and, and uh, I had to challenge their sinful child and uh, bring discipline. And so now all of a sudden, these people who were upset at me, so now they come in and we're shaking hands at the door, they're not going to shake my hand. They're looking at me, they're mad dogging me. The problem, this freaked me out. What I felt was exactly what I felt from the witch doctors. <laughs> I knew these people were not sacrificing cats. <laughs> I want to tell you, that spun my head out. The reason why is witchcraft is a work of the flesh. Witchcraft is manipulation. It's trying to change someone's will to your own in whatever area that is in life. This is why rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. One of the reasons why it is demonic people in self-will. They're not sacrificing cats. I went through a terrible uh, uh, rebellion in uh, a church in another country and, and uh, uh, went through two horrible church splits. When I was going through that, I would be on the stage sometimes, and when I would close my eyes to be worshiping God, I could feel hands, someone choking me. I, I, I thought somebody ran up on stage. I don't mind, there was no one there. What it was, there, there were people that were trying to, they wanted to change me into what they wanted. It's, it's supernatural. And then, of course, on some occasions, you have people that are literally involved in witchcraft. Listen, if you're, if you're ministering to people who come from the third world, you have to understand this. They are glad to have their sins forgiven, but they often believe the technical term is syncretism. They are glad to have Jesus save their soul, but they have real problems in life, so they will continue to be involved in witchcraft. When I was in, in South Africa uh, now, had something going on several years ago, had a situation, one of my pastors uh, talked to me about a uh, man in church that he wound up uh, dumping his girlfriend and marrying her mother that was 40 years older than him. So the pastor talked, I was like, there is something seriously wrong here. I don't know what it is. So in, in time, the pastor said, put him out. God will reveal it in time. So now these people have been begging to come back to church. And so the pastor said, can we discuss this? That after the donut break, we're going to discuss it. During the donut break, 
one of the South African pastors, he's talking, asking questions about the supernatural. And I'm, this is kind of the inspiration of where the sermon came from. We're talking, and he told a story when I said, yes, absolutely, even in church, you have to be aware of this. He said, I had an impact team come from the other uh, local church, very helpful. Many people got saved. We're having a revival that night. And he said, in the prayer room, suddenly this strange pain seized my arm. He said, I was in intense pain, weird, out of nowhere, And I prayed and said, God, where is this coming from? And he said, God spoke to me. There's a witch to your left. And when he looked over in the prayer room, it was a lady from the other church. And he said to the pastor, he said, you probably don't know this lady. And he names the name of the lady 40 years younger who the daughter got dumped and the man married her. So coming to church, but some way involved in witchcraft. Let's talk finally about driving out demons. So what is needed here is awareness. A supernatural worldview is simply a way of looking or at life or seeing. So you have to be aware of supernatural opposition. Part of this is sensitivity. If you're wise, I often tell my disciples, my number one prayer that I pray every single day, God, give me wisdom, wisdom, more wisdom. But part of that is, God, make me sensitive. Let me feel. Pastoring is more than facts. You have to feel things. You can feel things in the spiritual realm. You can feel when something is wrong if you pray. You can feel when someone is wrong. And please, I, I know the danger of preaching this. Some of you, you have the gift of suspicions. You're now going <laughs> to. But this is Bible. Elisha prayed over his servant. God, open his eyes. He needs to see in the spiritual realm. Paul, Acts 16, he was grieved. He said, what this woman is... She's from hell. Even though she's saying the right things, there's something wrong in there, and he cast the demon out of her. Now, listen, this is balance, okay? Yeah, you have to preach sometimes one side or the other. I am telling you the supernatural realm is real, but that does not mean you can ignore the natural realm. I don't care how many money demons you bind if you don't budget and stop spending, it's not going to work. Okay? Balance is a wonderful thing. Some of you need to recognize, while I'm preaching, lights are going off, some of you need to recognize patterns of robbery. Every time we get a convert, how do they get lost? So that, you're being robbed. That's not normal. That should not keep happening again and again. You should recognize unnatural resistance at times. Sometimes uh, uh, things dry up in the church. There's no visitors. People are not getting saved. That may be supernatural. So Jesus in our text, he supplies a supernatural dimension of power to overcome supernatural opposition. Luke 9, 1, he called the 12 together, gave them power and authority to drive out all demons. Power is might or strength. Authority is the right to use someone else's power. So this is the Bible understanding of dominion. When we talk about dominion, it simply means to tread down. It literally means to put your foot on. Every place the soles of your feet shall tread, he said, I'm going to give it to you. It's enforcing victory. In uh, Joshua, uh, what is it, chapter 10, chapter 11, they defeat five kings. They bring them out of the cave. And what does Joshua say? He says, put your feet on their necks. That is literally what dominion means. In other words, what they're saying, these guys used to rule here. 
Not anymore. We rule. That is, that's what dominion means. Dominion means you determine what happens instead of the, the enemy. Mark 1, 25 and 26, Jesus rebuked him saying, Be quiet and come out of him. When the unclean spirit convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. What Jesus did is he took dominion. No, I'm not going to let you do this anymore. That is what needs to happen in your life, in your family, in your home, in your finances, your fruitfulness, your ministry, your church. You have to tell the devil, no, you're not going to have that effect anymore. This is not a formula. People ask, you know, do you pray in Jesus' name or in the name of Jesus? I don't care. That's not the point. It's a posture. It's a way of looking at life. I sense that something is wrong supernaturally, so I'm going to use the power God gives me. I'm going to identify what is not God's will, and we're going to make it turn into God's will. Jesus said you can bind. There are areas of life you say, stop it. That's going to be bound. It's not going to happen anymore. You're going to lose, release. There are good things that need to be in people like revelation. You release that on people. Sometimes that involves praying for light. When you're struggling, one of the things that you can pray, you don't always have to know where it's coming from, but sometimes God will show you. Where is this coming from? Why is this struggle going on? Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, I'll go before you and level the mountains, break down the gates of bronze, cut through bars of iron. I'll give you treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places so that you may know that I'm the Lord the God of Israel who summons you by name. We had a lady in our church, for years she was sick. I mean, just one thing after another. She missed so much church, could rarely come. I was preaching in a, in a service, and she said that in the sermon she remembered her unsaved brother had a girlfriend from Jerome, and you know that's a funky little town, Lots of witchcraft there. And the girlfriend had given, I, I think she described it as a pottery or a vase or something like that, had it up on a shelf. And while I was preaching, she remembered that. Got home and had her husband bring it down. And she, she said, you know, I was praying and God showed me that that is from this lady and she was involved in witchcraft. And she told her husband, she said, break it for me. And he said, hey, God spoke to you. You break it. And so she did. She took it and she smashed it. And the moment she smashed it, she got healed. God did a miracle. Listen, we live in a supernatural world. I believe in doctors. I go to the doctor. I take medicine. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes it's not enough. You have to approach problems supernaturally. Some of you, if you have a problem with somebody in the church, your natural inclination, you're going to yell at them. You're going you're gonna to preach attacking sermons at them. You know, you're going to have a confrontation, throw them out of it. Listen, you need to approach things supernaturally. You know, sometimes there are people, I know something is wrong and I don't know why, or I can feel resistance and it might not be time. So I'll go by myself. You know, often people sit in the same place. I'll go lay hands on their chair and say, God, when they come here, whatever spirit's in them, they're not going to affect our church. We're going to rule here. God, you're going to help us. Help them. I pray, God, I want them to be helped. Well, I, you know, the, some of you, the only answer in life is kill, kill them all. That's not... <laughs> It would be better if God set them free. That would be better. But the point is you have to overcome opposition. I close with this story. When I was in South Africa, one of the first converts, they actually were saved in our house. Now he's pastoring. He's a church planter. We were talking about the supernatural. He told me this story. 
He said their church went through a dry season. No visitors coming to church, which is very strange. And on outreach, no one was getting saved. That never happens. He said he began to pray, God, expose something is wrong. Please expose it. The next day, that's Saturday, he's praying this. The next day at church, a young girl in church came up to him and he said, Pastor, something strange happened. We had a lady from our church come and visit us. And after she left, underneath the chairs, I found bones. Like, you know, she's sneaking chicken, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you understand what the witch doctor, the night that I finally, I had no idea he was a witch doctor. When I finally, you're going to tell me what's going on with you. And his girlfriend says, tell him. He said, I throw the bones. Bones are part of witchcraft in, in, uh, in uh, Africa as part of this. So he confronted this lady. He said, hey, what's up with the bones? under there. Oh, no, no. And finally, challenge her, and she said, Pastor, I have to keep the evil spirits away. So in the house, I put bones under all of the furniture. Now, this is a lady coming to his church every service. Said he put her out of the church prayed against that witchcraft, and he said immediately there was a breakthrough. They started getting visitors. People started getting saved. He said even the finances, there was a jump in the finances because there was something supernatural going on. This is why Jesus says ministry must involve a supernatural worldview. You have to approach life with a supernatural world. But let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. All across this place. Thank God. Now, I'm going to give a challenge. In a moment, we're going to open the altars and God is going to help some people. He's going to set some people free. But first of all, there are people here, you need to be set free from your sin. You are living in disobedience to God, and you know that. God would not be pleased with the way you're living right now. Rebellion against God. I want my way, not God's way. I don't care what form of sin that is. You must repent. You must turn from your sin. I'm asking how many of you here, you are not right with God, but you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sin, and you want to turn away from your sin and live a new life. If that's what you want, I want you to do one thing. Lift up your hand. How many would there be? Pastor Greg, I need Jesus. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. How many others? I see that hand. Thank you. How many others? Lift up your hand right now. Hold it up. Put it right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Lift up your hand. I need Jesus. You're backslidden. You want to get right with God. Backslider. I want every one of you that lifted your hand, stand up to your feet. Stand up. Don't be shy. Stand up. Amen. Come here. Come to the front. Kneel down. Facing me, someone's going to pray with you. God's going to help you. Thank God here, if there's somebody else, if I didn't see your hand, just kneel down right there. There you go. God's going to help them. You pray with them. Need a lady to come pray with our sister here. Thank God. Amen. Then I'm challenging. You heard preaching from our brothers today, and God spoke to you. I gave a challenge about a supernatural worldview. Maybe it is that some of you, you are saved, but in your background, maybe it is you're still involved in witchcraft. You must repent. God will not tolerate that. You're going to curse yourself if you're still involved in witchcraft. But others of you, God is opening your eyes. He's wanting to help you. You need to come and say, God, I believe everything in the Bible is true. God, there are things going on in my life, in my family, my church, my fruitfulness or finances. This is clearly, it's demonic. It's not right. And I'm going to take dominion. I'm going to believe that you're going to help me. Let's all stand up to our feet. I'm opening the altars. If you want to come, find a place to pray, talk to God. And they're going to sing while people are coming to pray right now. 
thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, help us now. Hallelujah, Lord God, you're going to bring deliverance. Hallelujah, Lord God, I believe you for good things. Oh, God, you're going to bring deliverance. God, break the bondages. Break the chains of iniquity, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, I'm grateful. Oh, God, you're going to give us the victory. God. Amen. Now we're going to pray. I'm going to ask God to help you. How many of you, while I was preaching, and I understand I covered a lot of ground, while I was preaching, some of you, you were recognizing there are areas of my life, my ministry, fruitfulness, finances, children, whatever it is, and you say, this is beyond normal. There is something that is supernatural at work that is not right in my life. Lift up your hand and say, that's, that's me. Some of you, that's sickness. Some of you, that's financial. Some of you, that's fruitfulness. Different ways. I want you to stand up to your feet. We're going to agree. We're going to take the authority, the right to use someone else's power. We're going to use God's power that he's given us. And we are going to bring freedom. Some of you, it's sickness, unexplained, like I was talking about. While we pray, God can heal you. Others of you, it's fruitfulness. You see it. It's, this is demonic. This is from hell, something that is resisting you. Financially, you can never get ahead. God is going to set you free. He says you can cast out demons. How many of you ready for that? Yes. Lift up your hands towards God. I want you to say this out loud. I want you to say, Father God, Father God I am your child. I am your child. It, is it is not your will. That I be bound, that I be affected or tormented by demon powers. And I recognize the power of hell at work in my life. I reject it. I don't have to have it. I cast it out. I will have freedom. I will have favor. I will have victory and liberty 
I am blessed. blessed. The curse is broken. broken. And I will have have the blessing of God God. from this moment on. on. In Jesus' name. name. Now let's praise God. Let's thank God for the victory. How many of you are here, you are sick in your body? Lift up your hand. Sick, injured, diseased, you need a physical healing in your body. There are people watching online. God can touch you. There's no distance in in, uh, the spirit realm. God is able to touch you. Put your hand on your body, wherever it is. Sick, you got multiple problems, put it on your head. God will know where the power needs to go. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I take dominion. I speak healing power. Let the curse be broken right now. Every spirit of infirmity is broken. Every work of darkness, I cast it out. Cause their bodies to function normally. 
be made whole in Jesus' name. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I'm asking you for a miracle dimension of God and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Now, now I want you, if you laid hands on yourself, I want you to check yourself right now. I want you to check yourself. If you're watching online, I want you to do what you couldn't do before. If it hurt to move, move right now. You check it. Try to listen out of that ear. Look out of the eye, where, whatever the problem is. Bend or move or what, breathe. Take deep breath, whatever it is, the problem. Now, how many of you know right now already that God's touched you? Lift your hand. I'm here, 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 there. Thank God. Thank God. God touched people. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Then my challenge to you, ask God to open your eyes, live with a supernatural worldview. Take dominion. And I stress to you, this is not a substitute. If you're rude and have no people skills, no demon casting is going to fix it, okay? You are the demon. That's the problem. All right, that's, that's another sermon. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, you can in your home. There ought to be peace in your house. Some of you, when you get home, you got to pray in your house. Say, here, demons don't rule in my house. We're going to have peace. We're going to rest. Amen. So I mean, there's a spirit in, of conflict that is beyond what's no, normal. I'm telling you, if you will take the authority that God gives you, cast out demons, and God's going to help you. God bless you. Our pastor's going to come.